He was the first to understand it, the first to translate his amazement at the wonder of life into a way to explain it. So this is a celebration of Darwin's greatness in the form of a rap. Some would say, a debasement. I would say, be patient. Just think of this as a manifestation of the evolutionary equation, a recapitulation of life, a, a reenactment. So how do you go from amoebas to rappers? You, or, you open the origin of species and you read its chapters. The first chapter is about the impact of people's actions on farm animals, plant, uh, pets, and domestic crops. Where did they come from? From original stocks of wild animals and plants which were selected and crossed for the best properties and thus became the effect of their cause. But not every selection was conscious. See, even if breeders in ancient <coughs> Egypt couldn't see this and had no idea how to rework the features of a species of sheep or increase the sweetness of their peaches every season when they chose to breed it or to seed it or to feed it or to weed it out and delete it because they didn't see it as needed, whether the preferences in question were for bigger chicken breasts or whippets with a thinner midsection or whether it was just an inner predilection to pick the best in any mixed collection, that's artificial selection. But. <laughs> There's nothing artificial about domestication. Ant colonies keep domestic aphids. It's just an arrangement where one hand washes the other. We protect the cow, and the cow offers the udder. And even if there isn't a conscious discussion, if our little selections and little preferences can change and enhance the critical differences between wild and domestic breeds over the centuries, then maybe that can explain everything. In the nature, it isn't us that makes the selections. It's survival and reproduction in the midst of competition where slight differences that arise randomly get selected by the pressures applied environmentally and eventually species divide like a family tree into everything alive from a fly to a manatee. So how does this apply to the craft of the MC? Well, variation can be found in the styles on display. I mean, poets and rappers all have different techniques when they're on stage, and the results can be seen in the audience's face. Like, <laughs> for instance, at this moment, you all look amazed. Like guppies <laughs> removed abruptly from their aquatic space. I mean, your minds are probably racing over questions of style and race and genre and time and place, and some of your eyes are glazed, like, God, how long will this take? But if you all feel that way, then soon I'll be replaced by someone more entertaining, like maybe Little Wayne. This is the rap version of the doctrine of Malthus, the proportion of hungry mouths to food resources in the form of captive audiences, where crowds of two or more will always be at least half as common as performers. Can you see the mathematical problem? But Survival on stage is a non-random process, because those who get massive responses tend to influence those who aspire to get massive responses. So if you say I sound like, for instance, Eminem, I'll say that's preposterous. But if you see me grabbing my crotch and acting obnoxious, then I might have to admit that this is a form of imitation modified by experience, which is similar to the genetic basis of inheritance, except it's a little bit Darwinism and a little bit Lamarckism as genes and culture co-evolve as we rock to the rhythm. But whether you think cultures really evolve, or if it's just a silly metaphor that's pretty but false, or, or whether you've never even thought about that, I still think Darwin can teach us a lot about rap and vice versa, because it's all about that competition for status with intricate language delivered in battles, plus fitness advantage and those different adaptive behavior patterns that have us acting crazier than Capra Kaylee mating dances. But hey, that's natural selection. So just sit back and listen and witness the evolution of the rap profession. <laughs>